Oh boy, it's been a busy day. Oh my goodness. So much noise pollution beyond the hedge. Uh, it's late afternoon now, but I think it's a good time regardless to be able to do another Blooms for You series, seeing as more have opened. And this is my Dendrobium Tortile. Almost, almost all the blooms are now open, but I'm getting probably a caterpillar taking care of business over here. So I wanted to dedicate what is left and what is looking wonderful and smelling divine. Hints of ginger to all my viewers, everybody that watches this video as it airs or further down the line. You are very, very welcome here and thank you so much for watching. Yeah, things might have quieted down now beyond the hedge, so I think it's our turn. Let's go and have a look, see what else has been in bloom or is still blooming and for you. This is a little red tulumnia, <laughs> two blooms for Jessica Nabalit. I had to move to the west side, as sunny and beautiful as it is on the east side, it washes out the colors. So I've been moving around, but here we can see the colors and appreciate them and not have them totally blanked out and blinded by the sun. This is a little tulumnia. The plant itself is not large, but the blooms are larger than any other tulumnias that I have in my collection. And unfortunately, I have to admit that it is a no ID. But look at these two. Jessica Navalit, you came in as a new subscriber. I have not seen you in comments, but I saw your name pop up. So I do hope that you are doing well and my little no ID tulumnia is something that you like. The reds and the Bordeaux and then the yellow. And the plant itself, despite being in the shade, you wouldn't believe it. Look at its color, almost black. And it is in bright shade. I'm really, really trying to protect these tulumnias from getting too stressed with too much light. A very difficult task this time of year. I embrace the light and the sun, but I think that this tulumnia might need to be moved unless it is the trait of it. I do not remember ever seeing it this dark, but judging by how saturated and dark the colors of the blooms are, I would think that possibly this is a darker variety of foliage once it gets in contact with bright light. And as I turn it, let's have a look, see what's going on in there. Nope, that is no danger. Okay, very, very firm, nice, lush foliage. But it is the blooms. It is the blooms that are in focus here. As a thank you to you, Jessica Nabalit, for being on my channel, for subscribing and for supporting me. I very much appreciate it. And I really hope that you are doing well in your part of the world. Have a wonderful day, Jessica Nabalit. And because it worked so well the first time, next up is another little tulumnia that I'm very, very happy to see. For me, this is a first time bloomer. I cannot quite say whether it is the Gyrac Flyer Firm White. I am now completely confused with regards to my tulumnia IDs and how they were labeled. Who cares? <laughs> well, I should, but Diana Smith, I hope that you don't mind not knowing exactly the identity of this little tulumnia, but I hope that you do like the little blooms that have little teddy bear features on them. Too, too cute. I love it. This is, like I said, my first time to see this specific tulumnia in bloom. I'm going to put it into my notes as the pink yellow teddy bear tulumnia, something like that, just to remember the color by when I save the image. So I have for this little guy quite a, a few blooms for the first time. They're not as big as the previous one. Granted, the previous one had very large blooms, so only two, but I have two, four, and five. One more is going to open. Aren't they just adorable though? Gosh, I hope the camera can pick this up. Look at this. Oh my goodness. 
I am in love with Salumia blooms and I am so happy that they're actually blooming now this time of year instead of, do you mind? Instead of being on a tray during the winter while they're blooming because my little west side has now got little pops of color. I love it, I absolutely love it. Uh, the plant itself, yes, <laughs> the baskets are a cute idea, but are they effective? Because look where it's blooming from. Ah, oh, you got all that space in the basket. You've got to come out the side. I mean, at the end of the day, all right, whatever. It is what it is. They don't have to be repotted or rebasketed that often that soon. But here comes another fan. And I'm going to have to be very vigilant to make sure that maybe I can get this leaf and the fan itself to grow upright instead of out. Because, yeah, eventually when the time does come to rebasket these, which uh, we've got plenty of years as yet to go. It will be a little bit awkward and I may have to use the pliers to get the blooms out. So what did I switch here so that the blooms got out of focus? Ah, yes, I pointed to the basket. There we go. Diana Smith, my little Tulumnia pink Bordeaux yellow teddy bear. <laughs> Blooms for you as a thank you so very, very much for being here on my channel, for being supportive and also in very early days. And I consider one year very early days. So I'm really trying to catch up with getting to everybody to say thank you to all of you that have left comments and also have popped up as new subscribers. Get to your names as soon as possible. For the meantime, Diana Smith, this is all about you. These are your Tolumnia blooms. Thank you so very, very much for your support. Bringing in the summer blooming season in my collection is my Phalaenopsis Leodoro Sweet Memory with her beautiful, beautiful fragrance of citrus candy, Something akin to the jelly fruit that you can get, but with the citrus lemony hint to it. Beautiful, beautiful, and very, very strong. These two blooms go to Paula Martin and Sedge. I think I'm saying Sedge correctly, S-E-J. Paula Martin and Sedge. I am going to hopefully be able to do your support justice by dedicating my two Leodoro blooms to you. They are bigger than I've ever remembered my Leodoro blooms to be because these are now on two new spikes that grew over the winter. In a recent video, I cut off the old spikes that were there because clearly the older a spike gets, even the fact that it is a sequential bloomer, the quality of the blooms weren't as they are here and now. And that made it very clear to me it was time to rejuvenate. So I have a few more buds to come on this spike, but here, oh, so excited. She has a little bit of the sun on her now. So there is a beautiful perfume and I am about a meter away from the blooms and I can smell them. Just divine. I hope that Paula Martin and Sedge, when you see this video, that you are pleased with my choice and just to let you know how grateful I am for your support as well. Very, very stiff and waxy. And like I said, finally, a decent size, who knew? I was never expecting that sequential bloomer spikes could get tired, live and learn. We'll see what the others do this season for now. Theodora Sweet Memory is for Paula Martin and Sedge. Thank you both so very, very much for your support here on Ninja Orchids. I hope that you are doing well in your part of the world as well. This is my pretty, 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 no ID, Dendrobium nobili. It was not an impulse buy, it was I need an orchid to mess around with during the winter buy. So it was a sales table purchase almost three years ago now. I didn't know what it was. It wasn't in bud or in flower, but I think she is beautiful. And for Explore with Penny, Stephen Northfield, 
Joni Simblante. These blooms are for you to say thank you to you for being here on my channel as always and with everybody. I wanted to know that your support is also very, very much appreciated. And I thought I would dedicate a little bit of a mass blooming orchid to the three of you to spread the love a little bit with regards to these blooms. Now with the afternoon sun on them, I don't know if it's very clear and visible on the camera, they have a chrysaline effect. So, so beautiful. I absolutely love these little blooms. Little, I say little, but I know that there are nobodies out there that have much bigger blooms, but this little commercial rescue hybrid, no name that I can definitely 100% identify, I find it too cute and I'm so pleased that it is here and it is doing well. I already have new growth starting in the pot, which I am very, very cautious to protect from possible mealybugs. So my alcohol garlic spray is going on them on a regular basis. And so far they look clean. What is that? What is that? Just making sure it's not dust. Now is not the time to do this. I will look into that when we finished filming her, but look at those lush leaves. Yeah, I know wonder mealy bugs like them, but I like them more. So I'm going to be looking at this with my paintbrush after we finish filming these beautiful blooms and get my camera out of the shadow. Look at that. Oh my goodness. For something that was a must need play with orchids purchase. <laughs> not too bad, not too bad. She is so cute. Oh, and she smells so good. Freesias don't last long in my climate here in Southern Spain. And I love freesias. These are longer lasting blooms than freesias would ever be, probably about six weeks, sometimes eight weeks, depending on if I get a blast of hot wind coming through the blooming alley, but they smell like freesias. Oh, yum, yum, yum. It's making sure about the growths here. There's another gorgeous new growth already coming out the way I want to from the base, year three. It is time, acclimating process is over. The hormones have been grown out. Now it's just time to grow for the following season. For the meantime, explore with Penny, Stephen Northfield and Joni Simblante, my little Dendrobium nobili blooms, all of this for you three. Thank you very, very, very much for your support here on my channel. I hope that you also are doing well. We are here once again on my east side where we have shade. I'm going to insert a picture now, what I was trying to do to show these blooms in the sun. This is my Cattleya guatemalensis. And these blooms are for Alicia Suarez, Ashok Tripathi, Kitchen with Farzana, Amin, Keres, Cares. Those are the blooms in the sun that are blooming for you right now of my Catlia Guatemalensis. And uh, yes, I switched to the west side because this is what I would like you to see. This is a true color depiction of these blooms. I have two beautiful spikes from growth that I grew last year that were not as big as the previous year's ones. And I cannot explain why not at this point in time. Maybe it was fertilizer, maybe it was something else, but this growth here is definitely not the maximum size. This one, eh, so la la, maybe. But to get 10 blooms on one spike and 11 blooms on another, at least gives me the opportunity to share them with the four of you. Let me see if I can turn this around. You see, I showed the other side because it was much more obvious to see because in true fashion of a bifoliate cattleya, one leaf would be covering the display. Isn't this magnificent? And the fragrance, I've got roses back in my blooming alley. You'd think 
by the fragrance that this one has. And I've got my ants doing their thing, which I'm not too pleased about, but as long as they don't bring the aphids with them, I'm going to just tolerate them. My patience level with ants this spring is really, really borderline at the edge now. But yeah, that's why I inserted that picture because I think this is just, oof, this is a color of pink that you have when you bite into a guava. I love it. I love it and I love the fragrance. Love the fragrance. So I'm really, really pleased. We did a repot cleanup, so to speak, up pot of this Guatemalensis a couple of months ago while she was in sheath. And once again, I was just not expecting to see blooms simply because any disturbance with a bifoliate cattleya, it can bring trouble with it. They just don't like to be messed with. But needs must for the health of the orchid. I have her in a very big pot now. And I think for at least another year or two, she should be okay. Famous last words, touch wood and all that business. But yes, Alicia Suarez, Ashot Kripathi, Kitchen with Frazana Amin and Caress Cares. Catlia Guatemalensis did eventually bloom, hooray, and these are for you. Thank you, all of you, so very, very much for being here on Ninja Orchids. I really appreciate it. And suddenly, all the activity behind the hedge has started again, and I thought I was going to get away with a little bit of peace and quiet so I can do all of you justice and show you my blooms and dedicate them to you. There's one more final thing I would like to show, however, and that is unfortunate, but let me explain. Thank you once again to Alicia Suarez, Ashok Ripathi, Kitchen with Farzana Amin, and Caress Cares. My fire spikes. As much as I love them, and as much as I wish I would be able to dedicate these blooms to many of you, I'm not going to because this is the battle of the ants versus me to protect my fire's blooms. And there's just no way. Every time I saw something happening, I went in with my sprayer and gave a gentle shower. The blooms are so, so delicate, even though they feel robust, that the water, etc., did them in. And look at what's inside there. I have to say that at least this year I managed to get my two spikes to bloom. I broke one last year. So let's say that target has been met happily, and I'm glad to see it. Trust me, this bothers me to such a degree, but even as a hobby grower, I want to be able to dedicate great blooms as best as I can grow, and not something that, even though I don't mind seeing them from a distance because they are impressive and majestic, I cannot dedicate something that looks like this. And I have tried and tried and tried to keep them clean for you. So, one target met, I have two spikes blooming, great. Next year, when the spikes start and my other orchids clear out of the dining room, I'm going to put my fires into the dining room to finish blooming and then see if I cannot get blooms that are of quality, of beauty, to be able to dedicate to you my fires Tancanvillia blooms. Just a quick I have to show them, they're beautiful despite the damage that they are getting, but not for a dedication. So, moving on. <laughs> there we go. Thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. Really appreciate your time, your support, watching the videos. Leave me a comment, let me know that you're here. And I hope that I see you in the next video. Have yourselves a wonderful day and please stay safe. Take care. Bye.